Now, what do you think? Was it disloyal for John Barilaro to tell voters to preference Labor over the Liberals? Well, Shari, I can't recall John saying that uh, uh, directly. Uh, our head of vote cards, of course, had uh, the Liberal Party preferenced uh, second. Uh, we don't have preference flows yet from the AEC, so we can't uh, say with definitiveness, but my understanding is preferences flowed pretty well from the Natsa Libs. Uh, indeed, at the last federal election of the 569 candidates that preference the Liberal Party, uh, the national voters of Eden Monero with the third highest preference flows at 87% of their votes flowing through to Liberals. So let's just wait to see what the data says. But the Nats were advocating a vote for Libs. That's what I'd always be advocating. Obviously, I'm disappointed that the uh, Liberal Party couldn't quite get there, but it was not unexpected for a government to... Uh, uh, not to win a by-election. It hasn't happened for 100 years. Well, John Barilaro did virtually, uh, on Sky News, in an interview with Peter Stefanovic, admit that he was encouraging people to preference Labor over the Liberals. And with the Labor's primary vote in the by-election yesterday actually lower than the Liberals, it does look like preferences were the deciding factor in this outcome, doesn't it? And, and would it therefore concern you uh, if it does turn out, when you look at the preference flows, uh, that a lot of Nationals voters did preference Labor? Well, uh, preferences obviously will decide the result here. There's no doubt about that, uh, uh, with both the Liberal and Labor parties and themselves getting just over 70% of the vote. Those other third or so of voters will, will decide that. Keep in mind that the National Party vote, as you said, was 6% of that 30 percentage point. So, uh, so uh, you know, we're not going to be decide the deciding factor. It's the preferences from the Greens and the Shooters. And the Shooters party actually preference Labor. They actually preference Labor. And I know John Varillaro mentioned that he, he would always pick what he thought the best candidates were, but the facts are the Nationals Party, our How to Votes car cards, people handing out on booths, preference the Liberal Party. The Shooters Party decided that the, the, decided that the party that shut down, for, shut down forestry, that's shutting down farming, that shut down fishing in New South Wales, it's taken away uh, people's guns. The Labor Party uh, was the one to preference above the Liberals and the Nats. That's what the Shooters Party did. So just keep in mind, when you vote for parties like the Shooters, it's like Forrest Gump. You never know what you're going to get. Yep. Matt, were you disappointed in the result given uh, how well Scott Morrison uh, is doing federally, how well he's doing in the polls, and given the scandals that Labor has had directly during this campaign, would you have expected a better outcome here? Oh, well, as I said, I'm disappointed. Obviously, I'd always like to win. <laughs> You'd always like a coalition candidate, your own side, to get up. Uh, but it, I'm not surprised. Uh, it was completely expected that a uh, government uh, would fail to, to pick up a seat during a by-election. As I said, it hasn't happened for 100 years. Uh, I think the result was what people thought. It was relatively close, but uh, uh, Labor always had that inside track being from opposition and trying to retain a seat rather than uh, the job for the coalition was to gain one. I, actually, I absolutely believe that the Nationals being in the race helped uh, because uh, helped make it close because uh, I'm pretty sure it will show that the 6% percentage, percentage point of people who voted for the Nationals Party preference the Liberals strongly. If the Nats hadn't have been there, a lot of those voters might have gone to the Shooters Party and they would have picked up a Shooters Had a Vote card and who knows where it would have gone. Well, let's quickly, before we move on, look at the Nationals' result because while it is virtually unchanged overall since the last election, I understand that there were some booths, some areas, uh, which were particularly disappointing for the Nationals. Uh, why do you think this is... And, you know, do you attribute this to the leader, to Michael McCormack? Well, well, Shari, there's always lessons uh, from any, any endeavour you, you, you set out on. And, and the lesson for us here continues to be uh, we have to respond uh, uh, to some of our voters uh, who, are, who, are, who are going off in other directions, uh, who, are, who are having dalliances with other parties. Uh, and, yes, the overall revolt result was about the status quo, but that hides this difference where we did very well in Queanbeyan, uh, presumably because of uh, the, the personality of John Barilaro and the candidate, Trevor, a great candidate from Queanbeyan, former deputy mayor of Queanbeyan. But in some areas, in rural areas, take Bin along. We had a, a 15 percentage point swing away from us uh, and the shooters got 20% of the vote there at Bin along. Uh, Tumut, 3% swing away from us and, uh, and the shooters picked up 7 percentage of the vote. So we've got to listen to this. We've got to understand uh, that in the Nationals Party we just have to do more uh, here to, to respond to voters' concerns. Uh, that was always my view at the federal election last year, while we had to be forthright on issues like coal, 
uh, so that we could show that we're the party sticking up for local jobs, I mean, for local issues. And obviously we've got work swing, to do in other parts of the country. Yeah, 15% swing in some areas is quite significant. Do you think this is a, a leadership problem? Well, as I said, I think it's uh, something we've got to respond to. Uh, earlier in the year, I obviously uh, put my view forward that, that a change of leader could have helped to deal with this issue. Uh, but it's not the only way we can respond to that. Uh, and I do think it's something we must address. We must take a more forthright direction, I, in my view, in, in, within the coalition. Uh, we've got to show that we are delivering uh, for rural and regional people. Uh, our relationship with the Liberal Party uh, has to be uh, one that's based on, on mutual interests of the two parties, not a friendship, it's not a marriage. Uh, and we've got to be able to show our people uh, that there's a reason you, you vote for the Nationalist Party. There's a reason that we have a separate independent party that delivers so, uh, for people in regional areas. So because we'll, obviously some to, people don't this, think we're doing that we'll, right now. Just to clarify, will Michael McCormack uh, come under leadership pressure now as a result of this uh, outcome? I, 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 no, I don't, I don't believe uh, that will be the case because that issue was decided earlier in the year. But it is another, uh, in my view, an indication of uh, uh, the, the coming threat uh, to, our, to our party. It's uh, been there for a little while. You saw at this New South Wales state election that uh, we lost two heartland seats to the Shooters Party. Uh, we've obviously had an ascendant One Nation here in Queensland that we've successfully uh, rebutted at the federal election, but it's been a challenge. Uh, and uh, that's, that's something we've, uh, uh, we've got to respond to. We've got a state election here in Queensland. We've got the Catter Party, the One Nation Party. Now, in my view, uh, the Nationals Party deliver more than those minor parties ever will, but we've always got to reinvest. In, we can't, you're not as good as your last innings in politics. You've got to show how you're going to score runs the next time. Yeah. Uh, very quickly, just a, a very quick answer. Would you still welcome John Barillaro as a candidate at the next election after his behaviour this time round? Oh, absolutely. Uh, uh, I think the result shows. You know, if, if John had run, he would have would have won. Uh, his personality is uh, following in Queen Bee and second to none. So he delivers results. And I watched Sky last night. He's very entertaining. He's he's uh, he's got something to say. Yeah, I think it's the only party where uh, people want entertaining figures uh, to be to be in charge. Now, uh, <laughs> there's a, there's a reshuffle looming with, with Matthias Commons' departure. Are you hoping to get back into cabinet? You just cut out there, Shari. You're still there. Sorry, I thought that was a very convenient time to cut out. Are you hoping to get back in, yeah, no, you got in cabinet oh. at the looming reshuffle? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm, I'm. Oh, yeah, it was very convenient, wasn't it? No, I hear you now. Um, uh, no, no, I'm, I'm very happy where I am. Uh, I've got, uh, I've got a lot of, lot of things on the go uh, as, a, as a backbench senator. And, you know, in some respects, I didn't spend a lot of time on the backbench. I was very lucky and fortunate in the right place at the right time, and so I've really enjoyed going back to that role. Uh, fighting for, for the interests of Queenslanders, having a bit more uh, flexibility to do that in different issues. So I'm, I'm happy with doing that. Yeah. Now, look, just on another topic, you've written quite a fascinating and really strong piece this weekend about the council culture we're living through, arguing that this is no uh, trivial matter. You say that the main objective of, the, of these, you know, this, this big protest movement is to destroy our culture, our history, destroy our civilization as we know it, and that they have this self-hatred of their own country. You write that this hatred is even spread among our schools, universities, the media, and that we've allowed this. Um, you know, and, and you compare it all to the French Revolution. How worried are you about future generations? Look, I'm, I'm very concerned at the trajectory. I don't think we're there yet in, in any serious way. Uh, but uh, the, the trend here is not a good one in our culture. Uh, uh, I, I was trying to, to, to highlight here how most revolutionary movements, uh, the, the French Revolution being, a, I think, the, still the template textbook example, uh, are ultimately born when people lose trust, faith uh, in their own culture, in their own country. Uh, and, and that's what we're seeing with, with this particular group. Uh, it is remarkable, I find, that we live in, in a society that is more free, more open, uh, more prosperous than almost any other in human history. But, but there is a large minority of, of people in Western societies who, for, for whatever reason, view it as a terrible and evil uh, structure and, and, and social framework. Uh, uh, if we don't do more to promote the merit of our society, uh, we'll lose it quicker than we realise.